G'day my friends, Marty Weir here from the Marty's Garden Show and today I'm going to introduce you to a super food, yes, all the way from Southeast Asia and if you haven't heard of it already, it's called Kang Kong Spinach and this plant is so versatile and if you live in a cooler climate and you get a hot summer, you can grow this as an annual or bring it indoors. It can grow all year round if you've got the right climate and it can produce tons and tons of food and best of all, you can grow it easily in containers. Let's go, shall we? Marty's Garden teaches you how to grow fresh food in urban places and small spaces. Before we get into how to grow this amazing semi-aquatic plant at home, let's discuss why you should add it to your garden. Kang Kong is well known in Southeast Asia and it's used to treat and keep at bay many health issues that now plague our society. Some of them being such as things as cholesterol, treatments of jaundice, prevention of cancer and benefits to the eyes, anti-aging skin and hair. So in between filming, Karen and I stopped for a delicious lunch and I topped a salad with Kang Kong. Now it has a flavour similar to lettuce, but just a little bit sweeter. Anyway, it's time to get started and show you exactly how I'm growing this beautiful plant at home. This container specimen was started with three cuttings that were striked in water from the parent plant. Growing Kang Kong by cutting is the most common way for growers and many Asian grocery stores have these available in their fresh produce section. This year I actually found it a little bit difficult to get parent cuttings because we don't have any Asian shops around near where I live and it wasn't readily available. So what I did is I went on to ebay.com.au and purchased some seed there very cheaply and got started. Now the seed do need around 20 degrees Celsius and it's 63 degrees Fahrenheit to get started to germinate. And once they get growing, if you get them in a nice warm spot, they really start thumping quick. And then you can start taking your cuttings and grow lots and lots of these wonderful plants. Being a semi-aquatic species, I like to grow mine in containers that have a water reserve below, such as the one you see here. This way there's less chance of them drying out and stressing the plant. What you can see here is three to four weeks growth from seedling stage and I've already started harvesting and taking cuttings at week three. If you're gonna grow this plant at home too, make sure you put it in a warm spot. It just loves the heat and the more heat you give it, the better it's gonna grow. Now it will grow in a cooler climate through the summer. So there's no problems there, just treat it as an annual. Now it grows super fast, so you do have to put it in quite a big pot and always put plenty of water down below, such as we've got here. This is just growing in a recycled container. It's about three weeks old. I've been harvesting from it nearly every day. And I just love this plant. That's why I keep raving on about it. And I really believe that you should get one too if you love eating plenty of fresh greens. One week after these cuttings were taken, they have shot roots on the leaf nodes and at the bottom of each cutting. In this water jar, you can also see a tea bag and it's full of minerals and worm castings and this helps the plant's root growth and simulates its natural environment. However, it's not essentially important to have that. It just helps accelerate things. You can easily strike them just in oxygenated water from the tap. So what we have here is my pot and my cuttings. And we're just in my little table here in the lounge room. So it's a little bit tricky to get this shot, but I'm sure you can see what's going on. And what I want to do is show you. Now, this is just a normal jar that you would get from, you know, like tomato sauce and tomato, you know, like for making up your tomato bolognese, things like that. And I'm not sure exactly what size pot this is, but you can tell by the size of my hand. It's just a recycled one that I've picked up. Now, I'll show you the size of the roots that we have here. I've let them grow just a little bit longer than usual. And that's about one week's growth after putting them in the water. Now, what we want to do is when you take a cutting, is you can see that, if we get this in front of the camera here, you can see you get roots off the end, and you get a root at each node. There's a little one starting up right there where there was a little bit of humidity. You can't really see that, but you can see there's quite, they're quite vigorous, and they're ready to go in the ground, and I'll plant them up to around about here. It's 
So I plant them really deep down and keep the roots as straight as possible uh, because what I want to do is get those roots down to the water where the tray is going to be sitting in the bottom and they're going to be getting a good drink. And I don't mind if these sort of fall out and over a little bit. Uh, generally the cuttings you take are a bit longer. You can see here, this one hasn't even thrown a root. But I really believe it will, so what I'm going to do is I'm still going to stick it in. I think it's just a bit slower than the others. They've all got roots, pretty much except that one that I've come across. I've got to pull out one more. So I've gone for five cuttings. And the concept is to just spread them out wide, put them in a bit of a circle diameter, and let them hang out a little bit. This, yeah, this one doesn't have a, a root either, and so it hasn't come out of the node. Now you can use uh, rooting hormone on these, and it will strike a bit faster. I just haven't done that. I don't really find that you need to. You never get a 100% strike rate usually anyway, but like I said, it'll probably still throw a root, so I'm going to throw it down there. And there we have it. We've got our little container ready to rock and roll here. And I'm going to take it out and put it just in a shady spot where it's going to get a little bit of morning sun. And then slowly I'll harden it off into the full sun, which it really, really enjoys once I believe that the roots are starting to establish themselves in the right container. Let's go, shall we? So I highly recommend you get your plant started early, just like you would a tomato or a chili or something like that. You know, in a little mini greenhouse, your greenhouse, little hot area, under some lights, and that way you get an early start. And as soon as those hot days kick in, you wouldn't believe how fast this stuff starts to grow. Now get some seaweed about once a week, or some type of liquid fertilizer, give it a fertilizer. It loves a bit of extra minerals, because it does come from a semi-aquatic environment so those minerals and things are in the water and also you'll get the health benefits from it too this plant is a superfood and it will do so much for you it might even make you look a bit younger anyway i'm marty Ware from marty's garden if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing i've got more cool videos coming up all the time teaching you how to grow fresh food fast in urban places and small spaces and i'll see you at the next video real soon Bye for now.